as a mission sport was a may i would like to repeat all those assumptions uh, in short uh, and then i'll go further and uh, if you have prepared uh, your assignment i have not seen yet because uh, because of uh, the shortage of time i'll be looking all of your assignments today and then i'll be uh, dealing with you for those assignments anyway and if you have gone through the, uh, the ordinary least square assumption as you have any kind of question you can ask uh, today because we will be repeating and we will be revising those assumptions along with the uh, some visuals how uh, do these assumption works uh, right now i am uh, opening uh, some kind of data with me let me see uh, what kind of data i have uh, if i go to my data file yes it is and uh, i'm going to gujarati data set uh, in gujarati i'm going to the excel sheet uh, and excel sheet uh, what kind of uh, question i should do mm, this one not this one mm, i this this is the better one okay Okay, guys. If you have uh, uh, any idea about uh, my last class, and uh, I have told you some uh, assumptions for the ordinary least squares (OLS) uh, assumptions, and uh, I would like to show you. The, I would like to please. May uh, I am I am. I can listen the voice of the children behind me. Please do something for this. Okay. I'll show you the slides what I've uh, threw to you. I think, and uh, that was uh, lecture two, part one. Lecture two, part one. Yes, it is. Uh, lecture two, part two, and part three. These were the slides, and I've uh, told you about uh, the assumptions. If you have remember, we have gone through some kind of. Uh, 11 assumption 9 10 assumptions so or what what all these assumptions uh, uh, do in the reality i would be uh, going with the data and then i'll be going to the estimation side anyway i have opened the data i want to show just a graph of it and then we'll see the assumptions one by one so this is data is taken from the book uh, Gujarati table number 11.7 .7. it would be 11th chapter and the seventh number exercise uh, this is I think the data of uh, almost 81 vehicles and data has been gathered uh, for the uh, performance of the vehicle and that is mileage per gallon and uh, mileage per gallon is actually being counted as a uh, performance of vehicle and the theme is behind that the mileage per gallon the performance of the vehicle depends upon its engine size horsepower engine its volume its weight and its uh, uh, i think it is speed what type of speed it goes on uh, it is fitted value I think I should delete it right now yes it is okay this is uh, uh, mileage per gallon which is dependent variable and the rest all are all independent variable so right now we are looking for the simple model when one dependent variable and one independent variable I'll be uh, going to that one so right now I'm taking the model as uh, the mileage per gallon as a performance of the car performance of the vehicle which is depending upon any one uh, uh, independent variable like it might be horsepower it might be volume it might be weight it might be speed whatever so in the last class we have gone through the assumptions and assumptions we have seen that uh, how this is this is in these assumptions work uh, we have uh, uh, started simple linear regression model and we have started this kind of equation 
where y was the function of x, dependent variable was the function of independent variable and other factors. But as I told you that uh, we cannot estimate uh, this, uh, we cannot estimate the relationship of y and x until and unless we uh, figure out this error term. And for this uh, figuring out this error term, we have uh, gone to some points where we have seen that the u are the random variable, the relationship between y and x are uh, uh, anxious be, uh, because of u, because uh, so un 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 until unless the u is not defined, we cannot calculate y and x. Similarly, the law of e economics uh, are bound with the uh, sectors paribus. Uh, we, we saw that the, any kind of law and uh, any kind of uh, pastoral in econ economics, uh, it is embedded with the sectors paribus situation where we say that the, any uh, uh, independent variable has some effect on dependent variable if all other things remain constant, but it does in economics. It doesn't uh, have some uh, to do in econometrics. In econometrics, you have to consider all these other factors. In econometrics, there is nothing like uh, sectors paribus situation. And, uh, uh, in the, and next was uh, uh, the dependent variable as a function of x, then the u has to be there as other factors. Uh, let me admit all other who is who want to come. Okay, and the last but not the least word in the short uh, for the clear investigation for the relationship of x and y, the u has to be defined and dealt carefully. That was our last slides, and then we have gone uh, to all assumptions one by one, and now I'll be uh, just uh, looking uh, or uh, revise all assumptions along with the data I have. Okay, uh, as we know that the, we are dealing with the uh, simple linear regression model that is one dependent variable, one independent variable here. I have taken uh, the example from your Gujarati book and uh, that's, that is marvelous book. If you want to uh, learn econometrics, you can, uh, uh, you can do easily by following this book. I have taken this example, this table, table number 11.7 .7 from the Gujarati book. And that uh, 11.7 table show, uh, tells us the passenger car mileage data. That is the performance of the uh, cars. And 81 cars have been chosen for the uh, data collection. These are the 81 cars. And uh, from the 81 cars, each uh, car is being recorded with these four uh, informations. One is the mileage per gallon, which is, which is the dependent variable. How much uh, the car uh, uh, covered the uh, uh, mileage in per gallon uh, petrol or, uh, or, or a gas. And, accord, uh, uh, and along with this mileage per gallon, uh, uh, the variable, the independent variable, which, which is supposed to be the uh, if having effect on mileage per gallon, uh, these are the horsepower engine size, that is uh, 49 cc or 55 cc, whatever that is horsepower engine. And uh, then the volume, volume of the car. Uh, volume means that uh, the, uh, uh, the space, uh, what cars possess, the interior space, uh, that is in, I think, uh, it would be in uh, square inches. And this is the weight of the car. This is, I think, 17.5. Uh, it would be, uh, there, is, there is no any kind of a key over there. But uh, when I'll go to the book, I can find uh, the exact, uh, 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 what we say that uh, exact kind of units. What are the units per measure? If I find book, it would be very well and very good. Uh, it would be help, helpful for us to understand this data. Just I'm opening the book uh, that is uh, Econometrics, Econometrics uh, and uh, Gujarati. Mm -hmm. Matrix. Just one minute. Just one minute. Matrix three. Where is Gujarati back? <coughs> mm -hmm. Books of Econometrix. No. Yes. Okay. Anyway. I'll be uh, looking this these uh, 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 units. Yes, it is. There is. We have the book. 
basic economic matrix this is the fifth edition of the gujarati book and 11th chapter i am going to 11th chapter to have that data to have that uh, variables it's the 13th chapter not 13 one this is 11 one yes it is mm -hmm. I think this is the data. Uh, no, this is not the data, yes. <coughs> uh, if, um, uh, along with this, I want to ask you any kind of a question in econometrics. So far, we have done uh, right now. You can ask right, uh, uh, because this is the time to ask. If you uh, don't ask the question, you will be losing many things because answering uh, a question and answer is very helpful in getting things understood. Sir, कुछ student कह रहे हैं कि आवाज नहीं आ रही. आवाज नहीं आ रही. अभी मेरी आवाज आ रही है सबको के नहीं. मैं आवाज के लिए जाता हूँ. मैं आप आवाज के लिए थोड़ा सा manage कर लेता हूँ आप एक मिनट. मुझे तो क्लियर आ रही है लेकिन बाकी का दो तीन का मसला है। थिंक फिर उनके क्योंकि मेरे पास तो साउंड साउंड्स में आई थिंक आई एम आई एम डूइंग वेल बिकॉज़ ऑल द स्टेप्स हैव बीन गुड हेयर आई वुड सी माय माइक्रोफोन इट इज अभी मैंने इसको भी फुल कर दिया मेरे ख्याल में भी आनी चाहिए सबको आवाज ठीक है जी जी ओके कर दिया मैंने ओके अभी सब सुन रहे हैं मुझे सबको आवाज आ रही है यस सर आ रही है ओह वेरी गुड अच्छा जी हम अपने डेटा की तरफ जाते हैं दोबारा बार लेस के मैं आई बी आई बी सीइंग दी व्हाट आर दी बेसिक यूनिट्स ऑफ मेजर स्पीड ऑब्वियसली इट इज माइल पर आर जो आपकी स्पीडोमीटर पर होती है uh, when car runs or uh, can be can be seen in the uh, in, in the uh, that speedometer weight it it might be a uh, uh, square inches and volume it is uh, uh, it is in again it is square inches uh, weight is i think it is in man uh, it is in uh, not uh, might be man or horsepower engine it is cubic centimeter Anyway, right now I am uh, uh, again I am concerned to my uh, OLS assumptions. How does these work? I am just uh, uh, going to draw the graph for, first of all because graph is the main thing, and through graph we can learn many things. So here I am uh, putting some uh, these values into the graph, okay? And I am taking one dependent variable that is our dependent variable, which is mileage per gallon, and and this is Haas power engine that is independent variable. And uh, on this Excel, for making graph, it, it is uh, necessary to have your independent variable on the uh, first column and your dependent variable on the second column. That is the uh, uh, basic tool for uh, basic uh, trick for uh, having the graph on the Excel. So this is your independent variable. This is your dependent variable. So right now I am uh, I am having uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, the two variable separately because uh, later I I'll, I'll be changing the independent variable one by one so that's why I am copying it and just uh, going it here okay so this is these are the two variables one is independent variable and one is dependent variable. Independent variable in the first column and dependent variable in the second column. I am going to insert and insert. I am selecting this uh, scatter chart, and now you can see the graph on the x axis. You are having uh, uh, horsepower, and on the y axis, you are having mileage per gallon. And you can see the dots. Can you uh, uh, see all, all of you? Okay, uh, what we have. Uh, uh, seen in the uh, uh, OLS assumption, first assumption was the random variable or the error terms uh, are random. So you can see uh, these points are not in order. These are very random points. So that is called randomness because it doesn't, it does not have any kind of a sequence. These error point does not have any kind of a 
uh, uh, order these points are moving along the our ex expected regression line so where is where is our expected regression line we do not know about it yet because we have not estimated the data because we have not estimated the regression line we do not have uh, any kind of a line in between but uh, uh, but we can expect so uh, that uh, this uh, line have some kind of a uh, 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 the, these scattered or this diagram is having a, some kind of a straight line uh, behavior or straight line kind of a relationship between the mileage per gallon and uh, uh, the horsepower. So I'm just I, I'm I'm going to have just uh, that line uh, from this uh, bar chart uh, that is trend line and this is linear. So this is our expected regression line, which is uh, showing you the negative kind of behavior now you know the negative kind of behavior what we mean by that negative kind of behavior that that when when the horse power engine size is increased then definitely the mileage per gallon would go down anyway so this line shows you estimated regression line expected estimated regression line but the scatteredness of the point shows that the original or true data you have taken that is having some kind of a irregular variation. What that irregular variation that is actually because of the error term use. Uh, uh, similarly, if I change the graph, let's let's say if I put it uh, down here and. Uh, If I take uh, the graph uh, of this against uh, not from the HP, I'm just uh, changing this HP with any other variable. If I change this uh, uh, variable from weight, if I uh, make a theme that the mileage per gallon is uh, depending upon, sorry, uh, I have, yes that the mileage per gallon depending on not on the HP but it is on the speed so I'm just taking this speed copy and just changing it now you can see the the data has been changed again but the speed is as, as well is showing you the negative kind of behavior so how uh, uh, how error terms uh, works in this as I told you that uh, until unless these error terms are not been defined not been uh, counted as a, a, a defined uh, a kind of a variable we cannot estimate this this regression line assumption number one was the error terms are irregular or random they are regular and random as we can see that then the second assumption was the mean of the error terms are zero what does it mean as i say as i told you and it is seen that the error terms are lying right and uh, uh, left of the regression line you can see that the error terms are lying on the right side of the error, uh, regression line error terms are lying on the left side of the regression line it means that on somewhere or from the any kind of other reason they are putting some kind of a positive effect because uh, any point uh, uh, on the above this line shows you the higher mileage per gallon and any point below this average uh, this uh, regression line shows you the negative point uh, negative uh, or uh, uh, the small or the uh, lower value of the mileage per gallon so on the some side uh, it is having some kind of a positive impact on the mileage per gallon on the other side these other factors are putting some kind of negative impact on the mileage per gallon but similarly according to assumption the mean of the error term u becomes zero anyway uh, i'm just uh, uh, changing some scale from this data because this data is not uh, giving me good uh, visuals this is 80 i'm just uh, putting the minimum value of 80 okay uh, where, oh, 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 oh. one one moment 
one moment guys okay i think this i have been yeah, okay this is format access and uh, minimum value is 80 if i do this oh sorry i'm mm -hmm. my y axis ko play kar my x axis ko chhedo i'm sorry uh, just one minute yes okay it is 80 g okay so you can see that the error terms are lying around the regression line above and below with positive values and negative values and we assume that these values are we can cancel out each other when we take in the mean or we estimate the error terms that will be having a some value of zero uh, another assumption was if you uh, see the assumptions let me go to the slide where was the slide actually mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay yeah okay i'm just thinking and uh, x value has a fixed repeated sampling case if you have if you have uh, uh, any idea about it uh, i have told you that the x is having a fixed repeated sampling case how uh, can we figure out this you can see this line can you see the points they are these are the points uh, uh, vertically on one value of x it means that uh, some value of fixed x is giving you one two three four five six and if i go upward seven seven different values of y i am having one value of fixed x and it this one value of fixed you are having different values of y so that is actually this assumptions mean similarly here you can see one value of y second value of y one value of y is below the line all other values of y are up the, above the line but all these different values of y are putting on some single value of x here somewhere so that is actually the this assumptions mean that we gather the data the x would be on the uh, 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 static scale and that static scale of x you have you will be having a fixed value of x and at that fixed value of x you will be having a different values of y that makes uh, this regression line fizzle out if that were not happen if that were not happen if we would be getting one value of x and against one value of y there was there would be there would, there would have been a just combination of a one value of x and one value of y then this then this regression line uh, would have to be happen in the screen but that regression line is missing somewhere the regression line is being uh, uh, faded out uh, somewhere this is because of this scatteredness because you are having not one value of y against one value of x you are having different values of y on one value of x but the, reg the, the regression assumption says says that that the regression line should be there regression line uh, 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 estimated be on one value of x so that is actually the fixed value of x uh, means of uh, 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 mean of that then the zero mean of value of disturbance u i have I, as i told you that every uh, unit of x uh, the mean value of u would be zero just like that i have told you that uh, some points are below the x uh, y line some points are above the y line but when i will be taking the value uh, uh, the mean of these uh, error terms the ultimate sum of the all error terms on the positive side all error terms on the negative side that would be giving you the some value of zero then uh, we have gone to uh, uh, next assumption that was uh, homoscedastic situation what is homoscedastic situation 
I'll tell you uh, that the homoscular situation is that situation where the error terms on uh, uh, along uh, uh, around the regression line that would be having a common variance or a constant variance. But here we can see that the variance uh, uh, does not uh, seems constant around the line because that is our expected regression line. But you can see that uh, there is a huge load on the above uh, above side of the regression line. Here is again on the above side of regression, but here we have uh, some sort of a, a similar load on the uh, on the bottom uh, on the down side of the uh, regression line. But that scatteredness does not have uh, uh, consistent behavior over this values of x. But uh, when we go further, then the load uh, 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 we can see that the load is coming on the uh, downside of the regression line and further the load uh, is not the same as here it is so uh, by naked eye you can see that there is uh, no there is a sign of a uh, uh, heteroscedasticity there is no homoscedasticity at all because uh, graph is showing uh, such kind of a thing because uh, the error terms uh, are not uh, this uh, scattering uh, around the line uh, in a in a similar uh, kind of a uh, uh, scatteredness. So this is showing uh, me a sim uh, some kind of a uh, different uh, issue, uh, 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 heteroscedastic situation. Let's say if I take another example ra uh, rather having a SP, I'm just changing this value with the weight. Again, I'm taking one independent variable. That is one independent variable. I'm just copying it. I'm putting it again with the weight. Now I'm taking it again on the graph. And uh, I'm just having this. Okay, now this is simply another sort of example of the weight. Now you can see uh, that again, we are having some scatteredness around the line, but where's the line? I should uh, have some kind of a trend line over there, linear. This is, this is our line. Again, we can see that the error terms are lying on the right side of the line, on the left side of the line, but uh, the, the dispersion of the error term, what uh, the, this assumptions is telling us, this is homoscedastics of the equal variance that kind of assumption cannot uh, be easily seen in this in this graph. Uh, but this graph is better than the previous one because here we can see some sort of a, 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 a little bit a good kind of a scatteredness around the mean. But here these kind of outliers, it, it, it is not outlier actually, but okay, I'm running out of time. If I go out, I'll be coming again uh, uh, immediately, okay? Uh, here we can see that these uh, uh, points are disturbing the variance of the error terms. So uh, now the question is this, what if this kind of a irregular pattern is uh, 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 visible in the graph? That is a question. Anyway. Yeah. I'll be uh, answering this question after that. But first of all, I would uh, like to finish these assumptions. Uh, then the next assumption was the autocorrelation. Autocorrelation. Autocorrelation, it means that the every uh, one error term would be having an association with the er other error term. Now, if I look uh, this error term and the adjacent error term is uh, uh, like uh, this one, this one, or this one. so how can I figure out this from the graph that this error term has, is having a, some kind of association with these error terms? So if this error term is having an association with this one or with this one or with this one, that would be called an autocorrelated situation and that cannot be easily seen from the graph. That cannot be easily seen from the graph. Yes, I can, uh, uh, I can take you some kind of a uh, data of time series if I get this one. Mm. So, yes, this is the time series data. I'm opening this data. I just want to show you 
how this uh, auto correlation goes like that saving and saving depends upon let's say income this is our basic uh, idea saving depends upon income so i am taking this income uh, here and saving is our dependent variable so i am taking this uh, saving to uh, right column and income which is independent factor that is i am taking on the left column okay this is our dependent variable saving having uh, dependent upon income and i am taking the graph of it let's see to have a look about uh, auto correlation this uh, i am selecting the again uh, this error term now you can see huh. now you can see that uh, the error term is just showing some kind of pattern they are following each other they, 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 that, that, that is not that much scattered and if i go to the regression line probably estimated regression that would be like that but uh, the error terms which are lying around the line these are making some kind of a pattern you see that that the one error term is following the other the other is following the other and that is making us some kind of a chain of error terms so if you can see the chain of kind of error term in the graph or the some kind of pattern in the error term that may be the sign of auto correlation and this auto correlation is mostly uh, uh, and widely uh, 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 happen in the time series kind of data if you have a time series data that error term is very common uh, sorry uh, that uh, auto correlation is very common <clears throat> so that also makes a problem uh, for you guys and uh, the next assumption was uh, auto correlation that zero uh, co zero co varies between u and x so that uh, assumption cannot i, I cannot uh, 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 make you to see in the graph because uh, this is uh, some kind of assumption which can we can uh, uh, prove uh, from other uh, way of mathematics but the assumption says that uh, if you are saving is depending upon income then uh, uh, this uh, income has nothing to do about the error terms or other factors so th that i'll be explaining when i'll be uh, showing you some kind of a proofs over there uh, later on <coughs> and the uh, next assumption was <coughs> the number of observation must be greater than the number of s parameters that is uh, not in uh, uh, difficult thing to understand the variability in the x values i have told you again the variability in the x values must be there uh, and uh, if the variability does not found it may create a lot of problem How, what kind of problem I, i'll be telling you later on and uh, the regression model is correctly specified obviously the model should be correctly specified i have taken the assignment uh, from you you have uh, uh, given the assignment uh, which kind of model is uh, suitable which kind of uh, data so if you have selected good data good model so you have correctly uh, specified the data or a model uh, so that error might be uh, eliminated and the last one the there was there is no perfectly multi collinearity now that multi collinearity i can explain i can explain you from this graph you can see that uh, sorry i will be cutting this graph and this. okay this is our dependent variable and dependent variable is mileage per gallon and mileage per gallon is depending upon let's say if i take this simple model to multi multiple one uh, if i say that, that this mile per gallon uh, is affected by the volume plus the weight plus the speed and plus the horsepower so i am taking four independent variable so if i have taken the four independent variable then the mileage per gallon which is dependent variable it should be explained by the each factor independently if error if weight and sp which are the independent variable if they are making more stronger association uh, uh, more than the dependent variable then it makes a, a problem of multicollinearity uh, we'll be dealing with multicollinearity in the later on chapters okay so uh, i have just shown you the last slides and uh, uh, how these assumptions are 
uh, taking place in the ground and now i would be uh, calculating that regression line which i've uh, i i've just uh, drawn it uh, but uh, right now i would be uh, liking you to uh, estimate that kind of relationship what how we estimate a regression line so first of all i'll be estimating that regression line on the excel then i'll be taking you uh, uh, to other uh, softwares like eviews like stata like uh, uh, spss uh, and then uh, after that i'll be uh, going towards some kind of a derivation of the formulas and the proof of the formulas so first of all i have to make a clear uh, estimation of the uh, regression line okay guys now you can ask any question if you want to ask this is the right time please all of you any question koi question hai aap logo ki taraf se abhi main इसको 